Hey guys, Miss Miklos here, and today in our lecture we are talking about combinations of functions. And this is actually something that you guys learned back in Algebra 2, and we're just going to see that there's some slightly new notation in pre-calc. So, um, first of all, we know that two functions can be combined algebraically, just like we combine numbers using addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Okay, so when we see this notation, that means I'm adding two functions, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, and we know that this x here is just representing whatever the input is. So let's go ahead and look at problem number one. So number one is telling us f of x is 2x minus 3 and g of x is x squared minus 1. So for part a, they're telling us to add these two functions together. So I'm going to go ahead and say 2x minus 3 plus x squared minus 1. And it's important that I use those parentheses because often if we have um, a negative or something else going on, um, it will affect our overall answer if I don't use parentheses. At this point, though, there's nothing I can actually do inside these parentheses. So I'm just going to add my like terms together. And I'm going to write my answer in descending order. So I saw that I only had an x squared. I didn't have any other squared terms. And then I only had 2x. I didn't have any other x terms. So I went ahead and wrote those. And then I'm going to combine my constant. So I would get minus 4. So x squared plus 2x minus 4 would be our final answer. And we know that we're done here because all of my like terms are combined. For part B here, it's telling us that we need to subtract. So I'm going to have 2x minus 3 minus x squared minus 1. And what's different about this one, obviously it's subtraction, but that means that I need to go ahead and distribute that negative. So I really have 2x minus 3 minus x squared plus 1. And when I combine my like terms, I get negative x squared plus 2x minus 2. And that is our final answer. Part C is telling us to multiply here, so I'm going to do 2x minus 3, because that's function f times function g, which is x squared minus 1. And I notice that I need to FOIL here. So 2x times x squared becomes 2x cubed. Outside, 2x times negative 1 is negative 2x. If I go ahead, trying to find another color here, and do my inside, I would get negative 3x squared. And then last but not least, if I did negative 3 times negative 1, I would get 3. So if I'm writing this in descending order, it would be 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 2x plus 3. Okay, and for D here, it's saying that we should divide, so I'm going to do 2x minus 3 over x squared minus 1. Now, you guys may remember that this is called a rational function, and that is something that we learned back in Algebra 2. And the only way that I can reduce a rational function is if we have common factors. So in this case... Okay, I cannot factor that numerator at all. I could factor the denominator to be x plus 1, x minus 1. But factoring it, I notice, doesn't help me out at all because I do not have a common factor in the numerator. So, I could give either one of these two answers as my final answer. There's nothing else we can do to simplify it. Okay, here we go. This time f of x is 2x plus 1, and g of x is x squared plus 2x minus 1. So if I'm adding f and g together, okay, I'm putting them in parentheses, x squared plus 2x minus 1. I am going to combine all of my like terms together, so I have x squared, 2x plus 2x is 4x, and that 1 plus negative 1 cancels out. Even though this is factorable, I do not need to do that to simplify it. I can just simply leave x squared plus 4x as my final answer. For part b here, it says f plus g, which we know how to do, of 2. So there are two different ways that we could think about doing this problem. We could go ahead and find f of 2 
and find g of 2. And we learned in a previous lesson, that means that I would substitute 2 wherever there was an x in function f and substitute in 2 wherever there was an x in function g. And then I could add those two outputs. Now, um, this method works just fine. I'm actually going to do it a slightly different way because we already determined what f plus g actually was. We already figured out that f plus g was x squared plus 4x. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute 2 in wherever we happen to see an x. So 2 squared is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 4 plus 8 would be 12. Okay, if you guys had done that that other way by doing f of 2 and g of 2, you would also get the same exact answer. For part c, it's asking us to subtract f minus g of x. So I'm going to do 2x plus 1 minus x squared plus 2x minus 1. And once again, the very first thing I need to do is distribute this negative. So I have 2x plus 1 minus x squared minus 2x plus 1. So I have negative x squared. And then I notice my x terms actually cancel each other out. And when I add those ones together, I get plus 2. So negative x squared plus 2 is our final answer. And if we look at d, it's telling me to do f minus g again, but this time it's saying of 2. So just like we talked about on problem b here, I could do f of 2 minus g of 2, but I'm going to go ahead and use what we just did in part c. We determined it was negative x squared plus 2, so now I'm going to substitute this 2 in wherever there is an x, and in this case there's only one x. So I get the opposite of 2 squared, which is negative 4, plus 2, which is negative 2. Okay, so um, those are the four operations we're really familiar with. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look at composition of functions. Um, last year we talked about composition of functions, and I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here. Actually, here we go. Let's read it. Um, basically what composition of functions is, it is a way of substituting a function into the variable position of another function or even into itself. So our notation, here we go, Last year, this was the notation we used, f of g of x, and we always started on the inside, g of f of x, f of f of x, g of g of x. Notice I'm reading that as f of g of x. Okay, so um, the way that we're going to see it this year is slightly different. We are going to use this open circle symbol to, to denote that we are using composition. So as soon as we see this, it's not fog, it means I'm, doing, I'm using composition and doing f of g of x, I can go ahead and rewrite it in the way that we are used to using. Okay, you guys uh, may notice f and g are in our, our examples here, but those are just simply names. We can use whatever function name we want. Okay, so it'll just be based on whatever information is given to us. So here we go, number three, f of x is x squared, g of x is x plus one. So it's asking me, first of all, to find f of g of x. So the very first thing I'm going to write is f of g of x, the way we wrote it back in Algebra 2. And I'm always going to start inside. We know that inside, that is our input. In this particular case, it tells me that my input should be g of x. g of x is x plus 1 because that information is given to me. So I'm going to go ahead and write f of x plus 1. And now all this becomes is a fancy way of doing substitution because wherever there's an x, I'm replacing it with x plus 1. So instead of x squared, I have the quantity x plus 1 because that's what our input had to be squared. Now, um, depending on what our answer choices look like, 
Sometimes leaving it like that would be fine. But um, in our homework, I would prefer for us to go ahead and simplify this as much as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and do x plus 1 times x plus 1. And when I FOIL that out, I get x squared plus 2x plus 1. Okay, so all composition is, it is a fancy way of using substitution. So now we're going to go ahead and do the second part of the problem, which told us to do g of f of x. This time, once again, I need to start inside our function. And this time, f of x is inside there. So if we go ahead and take a look here, it tells us that f of x is x squared. So I'm going to go ahead and say g of x squared. So this means in function g, wherever there was an x, we are replacing it with x squared. Function g originally was x plus 1. So I'm going to go ahead and instead of saying x plus 1, I'm going to write x squared because that is our new input, plus 1. So x squared plus 1 would be our final answer. Okay, number 4. f of x equals the square root of x plus 4 and g of x is x squared. Okay, and there's really three different problems this time, so we're going to start with finding f of g of x. So I'm going to go ahead and write this as f of g of x. This just visually reminds me to start on the inside. We know g of x is actually x squared because that's how it is defined for us in this problem. So in function f, wherever there was an x, I'm replacing it with x squared. So I would get the square root of x squared plus 4. Now, contrary to popular belief, this is our final answer. Since this is a binomial, in order to take something out of the radical, I need to have a pair of binomials, okay? If this had just said the square root of x squared or the square root of 4, we could simplify it further, but I don't have any pairs in there. So my final answer is just the square root of x squared plus 4. Okay, our next one is asking us to find f of g of, I can't read it here, 2. And just like we talked about on the previous lesson, there's actually two ways we could do this. I could do f of g of 2, and that means that I could go ahead, and actually I'll demonstrate both ways here. I'm going to start inside the function here and figure out, okay, well, what is g of 2? Well, I know g of x is x squared, so g of 2 would be 2 squared, which is 4. Okay, so now we are going to have to find f of 4. Function f is the square root of x plus 4. So I'm just going to leave a space there. This time our x value is 4 because that is our input. So I get 4 plus 4, which is the square root of 8, or... 2 radical 2. Now the other way that we could have done this is we actually already determined what the composition of f of g of x is and I can take this expression that we found and go ahead and substitute 2 into that particular expression. So I could have done the square root of 2 squared plus 4 which becomes radical 8, which is 2 radical 2. So amazingly, I find the same answer using both methods. Now, to be honest, if they already make you find f of g of x, I think this second method is way easier. If we're starting off from scratch, I think this way is actually probably easier to work with. But it really is just your personal preference. Okay, our last problem here is f of g of 0, and I'm actually going to use our shortcut here where we already determined that f of g of x was equal to the square root of x squared plus 4. So if I substitute 0 in for x here, I'm going to get the square root of 0 squared plus 4, which ends up being the square root of 4, or 2. 
Okay, so once again, if you wanted to use that alternate way I showed you, you could have used that as well, and we would end up with the same exact answer. Okay, our final problem, f of x is x plus 2, g of x is 4 minus x squared, and this time I was kind and I only gave us one step to do. So we're finding g of f of x when x equals 0. So I'm going to go ahead and write this as g of f of zero. And I'm actually going to model that first way I showed you guys, where I'm going to start inside our parentheses and determine what is f of zero. So in function f, I'm putting a zero in for our only x, so I get zero plus two, which is two. So that means that instead of f of zero, I'm going to replace that with 2. So now we're trying to find g of 2. So in function g here, wherever there is an x, all I'm doing is substituting in. So I get 4 minus 4, which is 0. So our final answer there would be 0. So key thing here, we're actually going to apply this um, concept of composition into our next lecture. But I really want to stress to you guys that it is just substitution. Don't make it tougher than it actually needs to be.